Oh, you have the itis. Oh. Well, it, it was all worth it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bears and Dragons, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so previously, uh, what happened with the Wayfaring Strangers? Well, except the pun. Um, yeah, it seemed like the guy who was giving orders. Uh, so Roger comes up to to the last guy and pummels him with two shots. Well, uh, actually, one hits, but when he goes to to take the other one, he's already falling to the ground. In the meantime, the camera suddenly flies up through the ceiling through a bunch of rock into a forest comes up to to the sky of the of the surface and goes flying west towards a giant city on the sword coast which those who know Faerun know called Waterdeep it enters the city, flying to the north end of the city, where it moves down towards Troll Skull Alley. Alley. Zooming in, you see a sign which has a, a bear and is, has the words Iron Bear on a metallic plaque. We go into the ca this busy bar uh, where we have... Uh, that's uh, filled with with people in the corner is a old man and a dwarf are sitting at a table apparently waiting for to be served out from the kitchen comes uh, a lady who has on her tray a, a bunch of meat pies bottle of wine glass glass as she moves past the bartender allen he fluidly lays a mug of ale onto the tray, and she navigates through the crowded bar to a corner table where the old man and dwarfs sit. Here's your order, Master Fisbin. Uh, finest bottle of wine, meat pies, and our house ale for your friend. Uh, I don't believe we've been introduced. She expertly transfers the contents of her tray to the table. Barkhead's the name, Lassie. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, might want to get another ready. <laughs> The dwarf greedily grabs the mug and starts guzzling it down. The old man speaks. Well, I'm well aware of your constitution, Borcad. We're here for your brother's wedding. Eat easy on the drink. Oh, you're here for... Oh, excuse me. You're here for a wedding? Interesting. One of our owners is getting married today, too. Ah, yes. Krebus del Mirev, a clarion of Helm. Husband raises his glass of wine. 
May he and his husband have a long and happy life together. Here, here! Borkat raises his mug. I'll make sure to pass on the well wishes. She turns and leaves the table. Fisbin looks, looks up at the ceiling and his eyes turn white as he looks through the floor up two levels. He sees a large white dragonborn clumsily, clumsily putting on his suit in a room as a cat sits on his bed shaking his head. The cat is shaking his head. There's a knock at the door. Uh, Krebus, hurry up. We're, we're going to be late. Uh-oh, Diona, come in here. Help me with this blasted thing. The door opens and an Asimar enters and immediately goes to help his friend. And you in nice clothes. Krebus looks at Dionys with sad eyes. Look, you're the one who agreed to this. Fisbin's eyes turn back to their normal platinum. Well, Krebus is nervous. Doesn't like being all dressed up. Ha ha ha, I bet not. Mirror Shock made a great, good choice with that one. I have a good feeling about him. Orcad gobble, gobbles down one of the meat pies. Might I ask why we're keeping an eye on Krebus and not your son? Uh, for his own safety, if he upsets Kriv even a bit, Sonagod will have his hide. Orkad bursts out laughing. The two hear heavy footsteps come down the outer stairs of the of the manor. It sounds like they they may be on time. Let's follow. Bisbin places a few platinum coins on the table, and the old man and dwarf exit the bar. They follow Krebus and Dionysus as they move quickly down the street towards the Temple of Helm. Mm. How's that? How's your little project going? Uh, them drow kidnapped him into the Underdarks and sent a little Borkad to, so I could keep an eye on him. He escaped, found some friends, got a little, little friendly with an orc. Otherwise, the lad's doing all right. One of these days, he'll have to take off that amulet. Getting worse from his continuous to drink. Something is going on down here. Something evil. Something chaotic. You sure about him? Yes. He and his fellow wayfaring strangers can do the job. Meanwhile, already in the Temple of Helm, a blue dragonborn is waiting in an antechamber with a smartly dressed human. Sounds of a bard tuning his lute is heard outside. Look, Kriv, I'm sure Krebus will be here at any moment. You know how he is with wearing nice clothes. Dennis is there to make sure he gets here on time. He's not going to be late. Cliff, do you say anything? Kel just kind of puts his hand in his, his face in his hand and says, Kriv, it's going to be all right. And just as it happens, a large white dragonborn enters into to the temple. Kriv, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, it's this, this thing. You can see he's absolutely uncomfortable in his, in his outfit. Uh, and he, he's... Like trying to move around and trying not to like, like accidentally tear anything on a suit. Suit. Uh, uh, is is everything all set up? Uh, it's is 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 Mister Mister Cheriel here? Uh, um, I'm sorry. I, I hope you didn't didn't worry too much. Uh, I try to get here as soon as I can, but um, they only helped out. He winks back. Uh, he takes her hand as you walk into the uh, the chapel. Uh, you're having a small wedding, just you and some of your friends. Friends. You see 
Uh, you see your captain has is attending. Um, and uh, you do see that there are a couple of people you're not quite sure of. Uh, uh, you do see um, uh, enter. You do notice uh, entering in a uh, halfling and a dwarf and some old men. Um, you do see. You do notice a few canaries uh, in the rafters of the chapel. You, your memories at this point in time are pretty blurry. Uh, so you feel like they're familiar, that you feel happy that they're here. You're not exactly sure why. Uh, as you enter up, there's, uh, you decided as part of this, because you are a paladin of, of Bahamut, and Krebus is a clarion of Helm, um that you're you're you want to kind of combine both of them uh since helm and bahamut have been known to be you know pretty much on the same side and everything this is not something that's not uh, unheard of or anything so to kind of combine it the location is at the temple of helm but the Tyriel is the is a cleric of bahamut who will be performing the ceremony I'm not going to go through everything just because uh, I haven't written anything out for vows for creepers. <laughs> but uh, you, you walk, walk down and you stand up, you put your hands, hands together uh, and Tyriel goes through all, all the rights, uh, having certain things in relation to your faith in Bahamut, his faith in, in Helm, Helm, you have the, I do, I do, do, you kiss, there's a cheer, cheer, and um, you head out, um, and as you're heading out, do you say anything to Krebus? Krebus is smiling and he is his grin just kind of like pushes up in a quarter and you know what that grin means. <clears throat> All right. As you're you're entering and you see this mischievous grin between the two, the camera uh actually fades back into the underdark. Where Roderick is just bouncing around, uh, boun just bouncing on his nimble feet. I believe he still has haste on. And is moving really fast and looking for the next person. No, they're not going to go into fights. You're welcome. Uh, I think he's an elf. All right. Uh, he looks around. Everything seems to be dead or unconscious. Uh, 
Gage goes, I walk through it and nothing happened to me. He just kind of walks into the circle. Picks up the dwarf, or Duro, I should say. And then just kind of like, and kind of like sets him on the ground. Uh, do you have Eyes of the Runekeeper? Okay. I was so busy getting something else set up, I forgot to pull this. <laughs> what he said. Um, there we go. No, because I'm sure you'll probably expose it anyways. Um, oh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, the the symbols of the circle seem just arcane in nature um so they, they don't really say anything um that you can read but there are there is a statue in the center which looks like uh, which has, which is where the like second head was was appearing, uh, which does have some symbols. Uh, you do notice on the back, uh, the name Dorhun is scribed in Dwarvish on its back. Dorhun was you'll remember was the uh, one of was one of the giants. Back at Caragor. It was the one who told you to come meet the chief. Or give it. Or who? Uh. Uh, it looks very similar. Yeah, it looks very s similar. It's it it's hard to tell. It looks you could say, yeah, if this was about the size of a giant, it would look kind of like a giant, but not really that distinguishable. It's not like an exact replica or anything. The only thing to really indicate what it would be would be being that name. Sure. You take the rock, you throw it into the circle, and nothing happens. Uh, well, it's a little weird, but otherwise. It's right in the middle then. All right, give me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, technically, this would be at disadvantage. Uh, 
15? Okay. Yes, it was. Yeah, so you're fine. So, yeah, so you, you walk into the circle, you, you feel something pressing on your mind, um, but kind of shake it off. Uh, go ahead and give me a Arcana or Religion check. Either one. Twenty-seven. All right, you recognize some profane symbols that are also on the statue, uh, which are related to the Demon Lord Demogorgon. Or religion, you know, one. Okay. Uh, so, Broderick and Syra, you would recognize it as the Prince of Demons. Uh, he is basically in the embodiment of chaos, madness, and destruction. I mean, you just been needed to be basically say what you're expositing and you're casting the cantrip. You now you now carry a carry a statue. You you take it as this is essentially kind of a a component of the ritual, a representation of whom they're trying to cast the whatever spell that they were doing onto them.
Oh, you've lost him. You have no idea where. Well, Roderick was trailing him, but then he doubled back. Nope. This is definitely not Drookie. About two, I, I mean, it it's still like two to three feet tall. It it just it's not that heavy. It has a little heft to it, but it's not terribly heavy. <laughs> you have a sack of holding, essentially. <laughs> Which they kind of put some loops around to make it more like a backpack. On a giant, this would be something they would just like hang from their belt. <laughs> you can easily do that. Because this is more like a, like just like a pouch with a drawstring, um, uh, you can easily open it up wide enough to put that in. Master, you may need to <laughs> clean out your ears. <laughs> I'll engage, secure him, tie him up. Well, he puts a gag around him. Yeah, but, you know, you could be a little more athletic there, Roderick. Maybe nimble. It's just weak. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take it. You're going to take your time searching the camp encampment here. Um. So, a search of the platform uncovers a similar but broken statue near a locked iron crate and a pile of books. The broken statue is similar to the statue in the, in the circle, except uh, it has a second fully formed head. The Corvish? Sarah? Are you going to read? So if you show it to Roderick or Lasker or both, uh, they will see a the name of Rehud. Mm -hmm. Uh, Syra, give me a uh, uh, Arcana a religion check. All right. So you realize that this statue would be a is essentially 
uh, specifically the second head is a conduit to to a curse and that if you take, you probably assume that you take this back to the stone speaker they might be able to figure out a way to, to curse That's the only you only found the two these statues. Uh, your caster identifying the statue. Uh, it is made of clay and has some sort of what type of myth? You you do is do you identify it as a as a it basically what I said. It's a conduit to a curse. But the curse was meant to grow a second head and induce a sort of madness. We're starting to think of what school, but then along the lines of like polymorph. Same school as a polymorph. Whatever it is. Is that conjuration? I can't remember. Transmutation. Ent, uh, or Etten. Um. So Lassiter, as you're you're making your way towards the other tunnel, uh, when you get within thirty feet, what I'm about to on the map. Right. Oh, because I'd have to. Here we go. You will all of a sudden hear, hear, <laughs> you basically hear the, the most annoying sound in the world as, as from Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, you're actually kind of familiar with this because you guys encountered one on your journey here. Um, this is a shrieker, fun guy. It stops.
It seems to wilt. Uh, Roderick, you feel that was a good snack. Yeah, it looks pretty nasty. After Roderick touched it, it really looked like it started to decay. Uh, sure. Kind of icky and sloppy. It's it's more liquidy than solid. It's kind of gross. Uh, give me a nature check. You have no idea. Maybe. Maybe I just grew here. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> you like shrooms. Not sure why this one grew here. It is clearly dead, decayed, rotten. Sure. You see a bunch of shrooms. They look like the uh, pygmy wart and the, the big wigs that you've been eating this entire time to them taller and smaller. A few other edible fungi in there. Uh, nothing new. Okay. You have more edible shrooms. None of the ones that you, uh, from your knowledge from stool, um, are really interested in, but, uh, stool has mentioned that they're, they are edible. Um, most of the ones here, the, the ones that make you bigger. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, give me a uh, dexterity saving throw.
Okay. So as you're walking over here, uh, you all of a sudden the, the floor gives gives way, but you're able to to quickly grab onto the ledge and you're currently hanging. You can climb up. Um All right, Lassiter, make a... Oh, oh. Roderick, do you want to pull him up? Okay. So I'll say he's... Like... Roderick just comes to the ledge and kind of like does this... It is a little unnerving. Uh, it's just a. Uh, there looks to be like some sort of green line on the bottom. And you uh, drop it into it, and then all of a sudden it just has like the liquid. It's only 10 feet deep. Uh, if anybody wants to, can can give me a uh, a uh, another nature check to see if you can determine what this is. Mm -hmm. You pull it out and what you dipped in is not there anymore. Maybe people could use more crossbows <laughs> and be like, oh, hey, we should probably use crossbows. Yeah, you could. They are a little bit bigger than darts. So, uh, but you would toss them as it. So I think they would do a little bit extra damage.
and you come to the end of the cave. All right, so you did see a locked chest. While you were looking, it was next to the statue. I said there was a locked iron chest right there. <laughs> uh, give me an investigation check. Uh, whoever's whoever's searching uh, the dead people. All right, roll me a d10. On the arrow, um, no, because that's more fun. Um, you find on each of the the regular arrows, not your captive, uh, but the regular arrows, you find eight, or no, not eight, three platinum pieces each. It was going to be 15 silver pieces, but then I saw uh, as nine was was three platinum pieces. And I thought that would be more fun. Uh, you don't know how, but for some reason, the, uh, death dog, dog with two heads, uh, apparently somewhere in its fur, it had 16 silver pieces. Uh, the big gal uh, only had uh, 18 silver pieces on them. Didn't have much. Now, the, the one that's live, um, Gage and you you come up and and he uh, uh, gauges actually Holly is there uh, holding up a little little chain with a key on it. Are you looking for this? No, oh, why are you going back in the circle? No, no. Um, yeah, there was a chest. Is there an actual chest on the map? There isn't an actual chest on the map. But I'll say, yeah, that it was over there. No, uh, at the top. Amongst the bedrolls. Um,
All right, the chest opens up and you find a jar. As it's a glass jar, it's three inches in diameter. Uh, and contains some sort of thick mixture. You open it up. It just looks like a liquid that's just, it's just thick. Viscous. Um, let's see. Um, I would say it's like a dark purple. Mainly because the description of the of the item does not give me a color. You identify as Kyotum's ointment. And there are, you would suspect that inside here, there's about five doses. When it smells faintly of aloe. <laughs> Slap some ointment. Mm -hmm. You literally just like take a dose from a jar and just like slap their face. <laughs> it can be swallowed or applied to the skin. Uh, you do also see a small leather bag containing. 35 gold pieces and 15 pieces. The, uh, you also find a book that uh, looks like uh, some pages are made from some mushroom caps. Uh, and they contain some some scribbling in Dwarvish. Uh, who is proficient in Arcana, Investigation, or Religion, and speaks Dwarvish? Uh, 
reads can read Dwarvish. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. There's a lot in here. It's going to take some uh, several hours to decipher. You figure at least four to eight. You're going to have to take some time with it. Uh, you do see tucked in one of the books are there are two scrolls. One of them bears a list of stone giant names, including Rahuds and Dorhuns. And another is actually a letter written in Broken Dwarvish. Derek, need more scrolls. Stone speaker Grom has traps, traps, traps. A jerky is wabby, too, and very small. I can hear talk, and in talk they say names, and I hear names, and write names, and give you names, so you can give me time. But you have to give me more, more scrolls. Magic key spelly scrolls. Drunk. Yeah, what do you want to do with this one? Oh. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, it doesn't quite work that way. It's better at battle. I just kind of like picks him up. Kind of like tosses it over. She picks him up by the scruff of the, his neck and goes, and then he just kind of like tosses him into the air and he lands just fireman's carry on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, Yeah, it's probably gonna be fine. Okay, that's fine. No, he's he's asleep. <laughs> he's alive. And I, I just gave him a Constitution save to, just to see see if the nerve pinch that Robert gave him actually knocked him out or not. I would think that. Roderick, do you have any sort of DC on anything? Oh, it's like stunning strike, right? Okay. What's the DC on your stunning strike? Just, just want to confirm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Something like that. So I just use I I just use that for 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 this concept to 
whether you could take it or not. Felt like a light. All right. Uh, you do not need mushrooms. Ah. Uh. I am getting you back here. So you're basically following the other way out, or were you going to, did you want to go back the, the way you were? There were some closets there. Did you snuck past? They were wrestling. Yeah, I could say they're playing or something. I'm just not going to off spell slots. Because oh. this would be his second casting of Pass Without Trace. Yeah, I, I had declared that because I don't think you knew that he had it before. But that's how you got past the closets. Uh, yeah, I'm just done his character sheet that I have. And still three, three thirds. Are you just going to stealth through here? Yeah, stealth check from everybody. Fourteen. Two natural twenties. Yeah. All right. It's very tiny. <laughs> This map, map is huge. You want to go left, by the way. Here. <laughs> I'll do kind of a hint. I do in this. Here you are. So you can kind of see, you walk that way. All right. Here. 
Hey, where did Roderick go? Oh, you went back the way you came? No, you're going left. Follow the arrow. <laughs> Yeah, if you follow that line to the left. <laughs> I just went back to check on the closets. <laughs> you do not see jerky. will say you know sorry I was zoomed out um you guys you didn't come that way Roderick did go that way or did you all go that way hold on You remember that when he reached this this place, uh, he ate one of the shrinky mushrooms and started running in. Fun guy thicket. So just to remind you what it looks like, it's a dead fun fun guy forest. Blocks your way. It's tall specimens, very you know, five feet high. Even as you assess the best way to pass through it, a hissing sound starts to rise, like uncounted tiny voices whispering in tongues you don't understand. Uh, actually, give me a, give me a perception check. Cool. You find five barrel stocks, uh, seven blue caps. You see a, a patch of fire lichen. See about six night lights. Uh, you do see three Nidhogg's noses. Uh, a sheet of ripple bark. Five tin masks. Uh, a torch stock. Uh, four tongues of madness. Uh -huh. Six trouble monks. Look kind of like the pages of that book. Uh, and then you see a bunch of the uh, see six uh, big wigs, the ones that make you large, and nine pygmy warts that make you small. Uh, you hear a hissing sound. Uh, give me an insight check. I mean, you don't know what it is. Could be snakes. Could be some other natural sun. There's a lot of fungus here. Maybe 
you're traveling through might have caused some weird sounds or something, but this is the thickest area of mushrooms. All sorts of mushrooms. Yeah, everybody hears some some surfacing sound. Uh, oh, no, phys you're a wizard, you're intelligent, you know, hey, this sounds like it might be because of the way that the mushrooms are, you get the idea that it's probably just the wind, the way it's kind of blowing through the, through like perforated, any perforated mushrooms that might be in this thicket, causes uh, whistling. Maybe we take care of this, come back later. All right, let's go. Yeah, I just kind of left them there. I'm letting you guys move your own thing. Oh, that, yeah, you don't see. Is one. See. I'm on the wrong layer. Yeah, the water the water is not deep. Yeah, you could easily walk across it. I mean, it probably goes up to like half your your calf, but All right, now that everybody's back to you, uh, we'll go back to Grackle Stug. Uh, you exit, push a walk through the the site opening, come out into the West Clef district. It is. You know, fairly dark, but you see some of the arrow as you come out of the alley kind of glare at you all. What are you doing? They see they see that Holly has this uh Darrow unconscious over his shoulder. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, they kind of have been glaring you through every time they spotted you while you were in the West Club. They don't, they don't like outsiders here. Okay. I mean, give me an intimidation check. All right, they keep glaring, but they keep their distance. Holly's probably doing the same. Holly's just intimidating. <laughs> just stay with me. All right. All right. In any case, you make it to to the gates, flash your badges. Uh, the dwarves open the gates to allow you through. What you can do? Uh, Timber chalk. Roderick has the hots for the timber chalk. <laughs> Um, yeah, you guys haven't taken a long rest since you went to see St. Burchard. So it's probably getting kind of tired. Of So you you go up, do you go directly to the Thimberchods or do you go to the Keepers or Keepers are in a building that's adjacent to his cavern. So they're nearby, but you don't have to go to them necessarily. Thimberchod. Yeah, while they while they do have like some low lights around, the city right now seems very quiet, much quieter than you you you've have experienced. Hmm. Take it as you will. If you want more information, you can enroll an inside check. Yeah, it seems much quieter for some reason.
You can just uh, take him to Zembertrod himself. Okay. As you approach the cavern um, out of the dark, uh, a Durgar uh, appears. And says, hey, what you doing here? Blaine. Eh. Remember, are you trying to talk to the keepers? You need to go over there. Look, let me give you a piece of advice. Zember Chad is currently sleeping. And he doesn't like to be disturbed when he's sleeping. Now, we're not a police organization here. We don't have any, like, cells or... Yeah, you're here pretty late. I mean, it's already like one o'clock in the morning. What are you, what are you guys still, still doing up and walking around here? Well, if you got a prisoner to detain, take it and take it to the stone guard. It it only has one hit point. Uh, does it matter? Uh, it technically it's forever unless it's destroyed, dismissed, manifests another echo, or is incapacitated. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you can't really tell if it's necessarily intelligent or uh, uh Gage will definitely tell you it's 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 just an echo of myself. If I'm asleep, it will disappear. I mean, if the Stone Guard are the police, wouldn't they maybe have people there 24 of however many hours there are in a tutorial land day? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Ember Chod. Yeah. yeah. Just think of the word Ember with that in front of it and Chod. Ember Chod. A giveaway. It is now just chunky boy. Don't probably don't say that to his face. <laughs> okay. 
we, we, we could do that. Uh, so here's a few things you could probably incite easily. Um, when you get this, had gotten description of the great ghosts, you imagine that they were Duragar, not Darrow. This is this is somebody else of some other group. So the keepers of the flame were asking about the great ghosts. Thieves Guild, Durgar, not Darrow. So really, this doesn't really have anything to do with that's why I thought it was weird that you guys were coming over I mean there's a still Karen Gordon Cavern because that deals with the Giants that's closer All right, so you guys go over to Karen Gordon Cavern. Uh, at the uh, entrance, you see a uh, stone giant that's kind of guarding the entrance. You have not met this one before. Oh, you were, you were speaking with him in the stone speaker. Oh, oh, hold on one moment. Uh, the stone speaker will definitely want to hear this directly from you. Uh, stay right here. It's off. About five minutes later, um, kind of rushing down uh, from the cavern, uh, you see the stone speaker, Grom, uh, comes and says, Oh dear. He tells me that that this was his woe. That she's created in the name of Demogorgon. Well, and this is the one responsible. Mm. No. Uh, this one, and he points to the one which has the like a little nubbin of a, a bump on his shoulder. Um, it says, "This one says has Dorhun's name on it." Hmm. This may have happened to him if you hadn't stopped them. Um. Uh, I will take these statues, and uh, are you taking this one some place? Not. We will gladly take him. And see what he can tell us. Holly. Uh, this, the uh, uh, stone giant, uh, not the stone speaker, no, takes, takes him just kind of like in his hand, kind of like. Has his hand wrapped around him, takes him from Holly, says, Thank you, we appreciate this. Uh, I would think.
here, take this. And he hands you this large emerald. Take this as a reward. We will promise to vouch for you in anything that you seek to accomplish here in Grackle Street. He uh, picks up the the statues and looks looks over at the at the darrow you gave and and starts speaking in dwarf English. English. We have some words with have with you. Just once you wake up, they walk off into the cavern. They were speaking in Dwarvish. And uh, I will just just to to so I don't forget. Um, if you do end up selling that ja that emerald, it is worth five hundred gold pieces. Mm -hmm. As a uh, uh, Romeo stealth check, Roderick. Uh, by this time, from all you're walking around, it probably would have dropped. So Laster, you notice as uh as you're uh approaching the uh approaching the end, uh Goldborn's lair, uh Roderick kind of like falls has fallen back to the back of the group. Uh and you notice that he's wandered off. Uh, roll me an insight check. Roderick, on your way back to Goldborn Slayer, what were you thinking? So you feel like ever since you've let Emberchad's lair, the, the, the cavern to, to get to, to his uh, cavern, um, Roderick had, has been kind of like, the reason why is now that you're thinking about everything that's happened, you, it was like the reason why Roderick wanted to come here, there was a specific reason why he would, it, that didn't necessarily have anything to do with what you're doing. And you feel that maybe he's gone off on his own to look into that or something. You don't know the specifics. You're not exactly sure what it was, but there felt like there was a reason Roderick wanted to go to Thumbershaw's lair, especially. Not exactly sure what it was. Uh, 
as you uh, enter uh, Goldborn's Lair, uh, all of your NPC party uh, is there. Uh, Stuhl looks around, uh, welcomes everybody back, and he looks around. Where's Roderick? Okay, is he all right? Okay. And Bill says, I'll, I'll keep our bed warm for him in case he comes back. Um, he, uh, in addition, uh, you see the late night bartender, um, uh, uh, waves down leaf uh, says, um, and she points to a table table in the corner where there's uh, another elf uh, same type of garb that leaf wears uh, leaf comes up uh, goes up to uh, them you can't really tell male female is very androgynous looking uh, they have a chat and he seems to have some sort of disagreement with them. And he kind of nods his head and comes back to the group and says, some members of my circle have located me and we are heading out. We're going back to the surface. They, they tried to talk them into allowing a, to have you come along, but by the way that we are going, only really druids can follow. I'm sorry. Good luck, and Stool is going, you're leaving? No. And he comes up and kind of like hugs Leaf. Uh, Leaf says, you could come too, but I know you want to go home. And your home's down here. They will take care of you. Kind of like strokes uh, uh, Stool's mushroom cap and says, thank you. I think I learned a bunch of things from you. Yeah, I saw your transformations. Keep practicing. And after saying his farewells to the party, uh, he makes his way off with this other elf. Hmm. Really. Says, really at this time of night? I'm trying to close up the bar. No. Eggs are, tap are closed. Sounds like five gold you can spend in the morning. Sounds like ten gold you can in the morning. Look, I've been here for ten hours already. I want to go. Then I will see you in the morning. Everybody's there. Uh, stool uh, goes goes running off uh, towards uh, his in Roderick's room. I think he was spending he was sleeping with Roderick. Uh, not sleeping, sleeping, but you know, just you know what I mean. 
No, I don't think he was. Ollie scares him. Everybody makes their way way down. Holly stops near near yours and uh, Ron Storr and says, and then then just kind of looks up and winks and then walks off. You open the door, and inside you can see a completely naked Ront saying. What took you so long, boy? And everybody goes back to their rooms and everybody gets a long rest. Uh, last year, roll me a constitution save. Man, you're tired. Uh, everybody regains consciousness. Um, uh, wake up. Uh, the stool comes out. Um, Lasser, you are still asleep. Uh, and uh, Ront gets up, though. Uh, but he le lets you rest off the... Uh, Previous night's soreness. Roderick. You. You wake up. To. The sound of the breath, they just like the, the breathing, not the actual breath and weapon of a red dragon about inches from you. What are you doing in here? He raises his head up and just kind of moves around, moves around on his pile of treasure, and and crosses his arms and says, "Well, what is on your mind, little one?"
Hmm. An interesting tale that you read. However, I do not have the knowledge that you seek. For I was born here. I've lived here my entire life. I've never left Racklestone. The knowledge you seek may be out there. However, I do not have that knowledge. Information I'm not even sure you'll be able to find here in the dark. Are you trained in persuasion? Persuasion? Performance? Anything charisma based? Okay. Only a charisma check. Well. Go on, Agent. Mind? Perhaps we'll see more of each other. In that case, I do ask you. Please don't come in here and, and just sleep here without my permission. Next time, I may wake up and just kill you, or eat you, one of the two. Well, I was curious as to why you even came and just... Took a nap. At least you didn't take anything. He just kind of like looks at you like, why aren't you leaving yet? As you leave, he, he pauses a moment and says, Roderick. In the future, you do come while I am still awake. I may allow you to rest here. You exit, and the dwarves uh, at the entrance, or they see you exit. They're like, where did you come from? Nobody reported you going in there. Why did you go in there? How did you get permission to go in there? Hey, oh, he's one of them. Uh, he dangerous. Uh, in the meantime, back at the uh, Goldborn's lair, uh, uh, Stool is kind of in the tavern area. He's got some water, uh, and he's just kind of sitting on, on a stool. Is sitting on a stool, uh, and he's looking quite 
nervous, like kind of worried. I'm assuming you all kind of go up to the tavern area and order breakfast. Um, uh, yeah, you're probably still asleep at this time. Tyra, how about you? What are you doing? What's besides the uh, uh, waking up and uh, uh, prettying yourself up before you leave the room? What else are, are what are you doing in the morning? You do come, if you do exit, go up to the tavern area. Uh, you have not seen Roderick at all. You just see a, a nervous looking, worried looking stool. You see the rest of your uh, NPC allies um, having meals. Meal is delivered to you where stool is sitting. Stool takes it and then walks off. Uh, towards the table where Eldith is kind of like in the corner, hidden. And then he, she, he runs back to his stool and sits, sits down, He's trying to be in the center where he can see the door, see everything that's going on. Uh, Lasser noticed him. You did not. Uh, Laster is still in bed. Roderick, you don't see Roderick at all. Roderick, you would know to be an early riser, though. Have you seen Roderick yet? Laster is... Yeah, last year said he went went somewhere. I thought he would come back last night, but he didn't. At this time, it, entering into Wilbron's lair is Roderick. Roderick! Will jumps off his stool and runs up and hugs, her, hugs Roderick's leg. Where you go? I was worried. Okay, I hope you're all right. What have you guys been up to? Oh, I'm sure if he's, he might be still around. Oh, 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 uh, Leaf left yes last night. Yeah, apparently some druids of the circle found him and they took him home. But they were going some way that only druids could go, and and I, I think I could have gone with them, but but I want to go home. They're going to a different place, which is not my home. Right. So I didn't go with them. Hopefully, hopefully you all can get home soon. 
But, 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 do you take me home before you leave? Yay! I'll miss you, but at least we'll have an adventure as we go. Okay, so says, says, I think we've taken care of at least one portion. Maybe report to Overly Cold. Tell them what we did find so far. And then maybe go back and see if we can track down these gray ghosts. Maybe. Or do you want to stick around and watch for Jokey again? Right. So you're all heading to Oh. All heading over back over to Cangorm Cavern. Alright. So you arrive back at Caragorn Cavern, you see Dorhun uh, at the entrance. Uh Dorhun says, Ah, the weird fairing fairing strangers. I greet you, and I thank you. Apparently, I was next on their list. Did you find out any other additional information from anything you have? He, he looks at it. Hmm, tracking down the stroking maybe mm, may provide you some more information. I've not seen any Darrow in this area at all, though. Hmm. My Dwarvish isn't that good, but it does look like this has something about ritual. Take a while to decipher. Uh, Okay. Did you take some time last night before you went to sleep, or? Okay, uh, roll me a d4. Okay, um, how long would you say you had, had read through before you actually fell asleep? Hour. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, can't quite pick up. You have it's like from your reading, it's incomplete. Uh, there, there's more to this, and you might be able to connect the dots if you just had a little bit more time. It's something about the ritual they were doing, but you're not exactly sure what it is. It's very complex. Your your help in trying to decipher this would be much appreciated. Uh, 
Uh, sadly, he's he seems to be quite mad. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Lasser, you wake up about this time and your friends are gone. All there are the NPC allies. Still gets it tells you, oh they, oh I think they were going over to the to the stone giant's place. No, Runt was upstairs when you walked in. No, they weren't. Runt was. Lasker wasn't. No, no, the other way around. Remember, this in rooms are downstairs, not upstairs. Yeah. So you when you walked into the tavern, Runt was there, but Laster wasn't. Yeah, so continue continuing with the Karen, Karen Gordon. Sorry, I actually completely forgot about you. Um, they they explained that uh, uh, they found out that his name was uh, Narek, N A R R A K. Uh, but uh, he's speaking gibberish. Uh, it's, it's he's gone mad. He Try asking questions, he starts, he may start answering and then go like his tongue just doesn't work quite right and he's and uh, starts just babbling. What is this ointment you speak of? Hmm. Let me. Ah, what can you tell me about this? Well, this doesn't appear to be some sort of disease. Uh, physically, he is healthy. Lassiter, did you ever actually, after being told that everybody's in the Karangorn Cavern, uh, did you go after them or did you stay at the, the lair? Okay, so Master is not there. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll a medicine check. They don't take you into the cavern, uh, but they will bring Narek out. Narek is obviously crazy. He looks physically fine. He's just crazy. It is quite possible everything that Roderick was reading. 
uh, may help. And maybe take some more time with that that tome. Might be able to figure out exactly what might be what might be happening here. Uh, not that we are aware of. If they are trying to do something against the Durgar, which they do not have much love for, then it is quite possible. Obviously, this one must have. Is there anything else that I can help you? Right? Lasser is doing some shopping in the tavern. What are you guys doing? Are you guys doing a walk and talk or just saying this in front of Karen Gordon Cavern? There's a reason why I'm asking this. Walk and talk going back to the lair. All right. Halfway uh, back from the lair, you spot Lassiter. Lassiter has rejoined the group. He looks tired. <laughs> He's not exhausted, just a little tired, a little groggy.
it's yeah. All right. So mm-hmm. All right. So you so let me get those straight. Roderick's going to go back and uh, do some reading at Goldborn's Lair. Well, everybody else basically cases the Dark Lake District. All right, so, uh, Roderick, uh, after about three hours, you, you figured after that first hour, you were like a quarter way through the information. Um, by the time you're done done reading through the whole thing, and as you read it, you realize that uh, the book outlines two rituals. One that causes a one-headed creature to sprout a second head. And another that allows the grafting of a severed head onto a living creature. But I would fail to mention any additional additional information, just the detailing of this entire process. You've, I would say you would be able to figure figure that knowledge of the ritual will help figure out how to reverse its effects. So this would be valuable information for the uh, Super Giants. Help with the uh, removal of the curse or even possibly prevention knowing how the ritual is formed. Um, as for everybody else, uh, go ahead and place your characters on the map and just tell me what areas you're going to be searching. I would like you both to roll me a perception check. Uh, Sova and uh, Syra, it seems to be pretty cool. I'm just kind of hanging around the area. This nothing seems to be happening. Yeah. 
you, uh, meanwhile, uh, Laster, uh, you, you don't see Droki, but you do notice something's, something's off about one of the drainage pipes on the eastmost pier of the, uh, Dark Lake docks. It, is, it looks like it's covered by a pile of refuse. Yeah, you see, um, after, if you clear off the refuse, you see that there's loose bars block the five foot passage. Do you think? Because it, it, it doesn't look like it's actually draining anything off. Something off about this. Uh, yeah, actually, give me a perception check. Another one. All right, perfect. Um, looking, looking at it, you do notice that there is a thin wire connecting the top of one of the to the top. A, connected to the top of one of the bars. Yep. Uh, you can't really see. You could, you do. I would say that your your passive insight would be enough to to discern. This is some sort of. This would trigger something. What it does, uh, not sure. Based off of the fact that you can't see anything, maybe some sort of alarm. May not be like a full on trap, just something to alert people, on something. A lot. There's people just doing their business on the, the docks. Uh, uh, yeah, what do you want? This is a uh, uh, Durgar. Uh, it's a drainage pipe. Oh, kind of odd. It's kind of not draining anything. I don't know. It's a wire on the thing. I, I did, I'm just a dock worker. Will you take me to for some investigator or something? No! I gotta get back to work. The mill on. Fucks off. Stupid humans. Oh, really?
a wisdom save. Okay. Huh. We should probably pull that. Hey, like, move out of the way. He opens up the, the grate. Ah, nothing happened. He closes it. He's walking back. Yeah. You open the grate, nothing happened. Put it back. He's already about like 30, 50, 80 feet off. He just walked away. Gage and Holly are probably out here somewhere. Well, you'll find Sova. All right, so. Uh, I'm assuming you guys mentioned where you guys were going to station each other. Uh, so so you, you, you start walking that direction. You see uh, Sova. Sova hoots at you. But he keeps his position. He sees you coming, so he hoots. Syra, you kind of get this mental feeling of that, hey, somebody's coming your way. And next thing you know is last for turning the corner. I do need a perception check from Gage and Ollie. I forgot I forgot about them. There's a no oh, Holly didn't see anything. Uh, Gage, where would have Gage gone? He probably went to the far side here. Yeah. Really. Uh it does uh he he'll come back and he says, uh there's another tavern like just off the uh just into the dark lake. I have something interesting. Uh, um Holly found a brewery. About it. Nobody knows Storky at all. But there is an a a some weird thing about drainage pipe. Last week, ro roll me an insight check quickly. Yep. All right now, just uh something weird about that pipe. I mean, there was a thing. Must have done something. Just. You didn't see anything being done. That that wire. Something about that wire. That's it. With that, 
will end tonight's session in about any time. Thank you all for joining us. Appreciate it. We will see you next week. He did. He, I mean, he did. When he opened up the, the, the grate, it pulled the wire when you opened the grate. Just you, yeah, you didn't perceive anything done. Nothing seemed to happen to the Duragar, so. No, it kind of went up with the grate. It stayed taut the entire time. Like, if it's tied to something, you can't see what it is tied, but it's... No extra clues. I'm just giving you with the information that you would have and everything that you would have gotten. So, stopping the stream.